All right, guys, let's jump right into the problem here. I got some notes here I wanna cover and make sure we cover this problem so that you guys won't have this going forward. So you want to add projects to your portfolio and you want to leverage Python and data science to do so. At the end of the day, guys, you have to have those real world projects on your portfolio to really make you stand out. If you don't have the real world projects, really put you at a disadvantage. Even if people don't know as much of the programming language as you, they have more practical experience, practical knowledge to really be able to stand out in front of you. And we want to help solve that problem. So guys, I want you guys to tell me your current experience with this problem. Do you currently have this problem? How did you overcome it? What question do you have? Go ahead and comment below so we can share and help you guys with that and tell me your problem so that we can really help customize solutions for you guys. But at the end of the day, it really come down to um, having that job, that real world job experience, guys, those business problems that's going to help you stand out. If you don't have that, you will struggle to be able to get the type of jobs you want because at the end of the day, it all comes down to solving business problems. Yeah, you can have all the programming knowledge in the world. You can know all the algorithm, all, all the programming language, all the frameworks, but at the end of the day, if you don't know how to solve problems, you don't know how to showcase your skills, you will struggle to find jobs. You won't get paid the amount that you want and you're going to struggle, guys. So I want to make sure we help you guys with that. That being said, guys, I want to go over some things here to make sure I get you guys that competitive advantage so that you can have those projects under your belt. I'm going to give you a few examples, five examples of projects as well at the end of the day. But guys, I can't cover. Obviously, I have more than five. So if you can, go ahead and sign up for our seven step guide below. That guy's gonna help you take your skills to the next level and really put you in position so that you can win. And also, if you already got that seven step free guide, go ahead and sign up for the premium courses below. Got links for that as well. And you can be a part of our free community so that we can help take your career to the next level and be that aspiring developer that you are. So at the end of the day, guys, you have to get started. So I want to give you some details on a little bit of story, guys. Just put yourself in a uh, position as a uh, aspiring developer who want to be a uh, uh, aspiring Python developer who really want to get their first job and they're struggling. No real world experience, no projects, really don't have anything to lay their hat on as far as just being able to for skills. What should they do? They're feeling bad about themselves, no job prospects, and the job prospects they got, they're not sure about because they know that they're not the best prospect. How can we change this for this developer? You're gonna find yourself in this position all the time, guys, and I wanna help you guys out. I have these five projects that we're gonna go over, and it's gonna really help take things to the next level for you, and it's gonna showcase your skills, and plus you're gonna have some fun as well, and this is for beginners as well. So, um, the number one project, guys, a help desk chatbot. Every good sized company is going to have some kind of help desk, some kind of customer service that asks the same questions over and over and over again. Python have chatbot frameworks that's going to help you guys build this out. You don't have to be perfect the first time around. It don't have to be a full fledged chatbot to answer every project. You just have a proof of concept, a subset of questions that you ask, and you can build on your knowledge base over time. And that bot can really be um, after a year of development can really answer, uh, let's say 80% of the routine questions. You have questions that people come to in your help desk saying, Hey, I need a password reset. Chatbot can do that kind of stuff. Tell, give specific instructions, username, um, old passwords, some identification, let that chatbot do that kind of stuff. You don't have to have it built out. You just have to have a proof of concept, guys. Know the um, underlining code and be able to apply that to real world scenarios. That's the kind of stuff that Python can do really great. A lot of people try to do this in Java, which you can do it in pretty much any programming language, but it can't. It really comes down to what programming language is optimized to build this kind of stuff. The frameworks and all the other syntax, guys, is really got to understand them. Number two project, asset tracking and Google mapping, guys, you know, with dashboards. Just imagine you walk in a room of a client and you see a dashboard. Um, let's say a trucking company. You see all these trucks on this map. You got a visual where all your trucks are. 
so that if you get a call at any instance, you can tell who's in that region and can communicate what lows they are and just have that information right in front of you. You can take that same concept and apply it to any in industry, guys. These are really good data science projects that you can put on a portfolio. And again, you just need to be able to showcase that different type of skill set. These are some good stuff, guys. And this is something that I really want you guys to be able to do. And again, it's not going to be perfect. You can go get a template or something like that to be able to showcase your skills but the, the goal is to be able to um, display your knowledge of a specific industry and the tools you're able to build number three it's not as sexy as the other two, but data cleanup and structuring, guys. It's so important that you clean up your data because it makes your program run more efficient. You'll be, you'll be able to optimize things better and you have more structure to your data, especially when you build new projects. You want to make sure those data types, those structures, your data in those databases as standardized as possible and structured to as close as perfect as you can. You're never going to achieve perfection because you're always going to be working towards or something better so you want to make sure it's at least standardized and good to go on that front number four um customer purchase predictions using google analytics this is a lot more advanced you got a lot of marketing automation tools out there that kind of do this but not customized to that specific customer needs i use uh, active campaign and i do some javascript tracking you can do the same as zz and python uh, with a lot of cookies and things like that but basically what it really come down to is certain activities that you track from a specific client let's say they go to to a purchase page and they don't buy or maybe they talked to you recently and they sent you sent an email and they opened that email but they didn't take action those type of actions you want to prioritize and predict when they're going to buy so that you can have a sales rep reach out at the exact right time this is one of the features that you can do pretty much any business especially those professional services business with longer uh purchase uh, journeys it, you you with that project alone is going to help you stand out especially with some sales departments as well uh, machine learning and um, analytics business trends guys this is a little bit more advanced and i'm not expecting you guys to have this built out i just want you to have this on the top of your mind and just kind of working through this particular project this wouldn't be the first one i try i try the other four before i get to this one but at the end of the day you want something to be able to monitor your data analyze your data not a human but a machine and pick up certain trends based off of certain events this is some advanced stuff guys and even i struggle with this to the day because at the end of the day the problems keep evolving so you're going to always try to be looking for different angles different trends to solve so you never get to the point where you know you you have all the answers when it comes to machine learning it's basically gathering data and being able to find the trends and say hey every time this data trend happens we get this results how to continue to get this good result or prevent this bad result that's really what it comes down to you put the actual software the code in place to be able to do that machine learning guys and be able to report on those trends as well um last but not least um i have a ton of other stuff guys here i don't want to belabor you guys with all these projects i want you to start with the top four add number five and then you can really take your skills to the next level you put this on your portfolio you're definitely going to stand out uh, more than the other uh, python developers who don't got any job experience who don't have any portfolio real world projects on their belt they come in there with calculator apps and things like that which i'm not gonna knock that if you do that great but people who go through my um seven step guide and my courses are gonna wipe the floor with those people because they're coming in with just abstract general stuff which if that's what the only thing you got roll with it but when people come through my seven step guide they're gonna have this type of portfolio you're not gonna stand a chance so i want every, everybody who's a part of the digital community to start with these resources have this on your portfolio and we're gonna help you along the way guys